Have you ever pondered life's questions and wondered, who first used salt? Well, today we're going to find out. So today we're going to be starting a new series where we delve a little deeper into the everyday items we consume. Facts and foods. Right, so this is probably the form that you know it in. Obviously, this is salt or sodium chloride, less commonly known as NaCl. It's obviously used today as a cooking ingredient around the world. Salt has also a number of other uses, historically being used as currency and even mummification. We'll talk more about those topics in a minute, but for now, let's have a look at a few other examples. So here's just a few more examples of sodium chloride. We've got Himalayan salt lamp here obviously you plug this in and it lights up it's got a beautiful color but this is very salty as well incredibly uh, we've got normal table salt and then we've got our molden salt as well sea salt flakes which is quite interesting uh, again all of these are sodium chloride NaCl so that's sodium reacted in chlorine uh, to create obviously the crystals we see here very interesting stuff if you want to know more about the chemistry I'll link some videos that go into more depth about the actual chemistry of the substance itself right well we learned a little bit more about the history of salt we're gonna be making a Caesar salad here since it has such an embedded history with the Romans so to start we'll get some salt and pepper into our bowl so what's quite interesting is centuries ago, salt actually ruled everything around us and was used as a major currency. So much so that the word salary is actually derived from Latin meaning salt money. So next thing we'll chuck a couple garlics and mash them up with these forks. Salt actually being used as a currency dates back to 6000 BC when they were harvested off the lake of Yuncheng in China. Obviously cannot forget the capers, let's get those bad boys in there. Salt has actually played a vital part in religious ritual. There's actually over 30 mentions of salt in the Bible alone. No salty food spared in this dish, we'll get our anchovies in now. We can even see the effect that that has on our language today with phrases like salt of the earth describing someone as very down to earth character. Next thing goes some egg yolk, mustard and a little touch of olive oil as well. So on some of the more scientific stuff, what's interesting is our body needs about 100 grams of salt for every 40 kilograms of person. Sodium is actually key in the operation of signals in the cells around the body, also to and from the brain. Into that a drop of red wine vinegar, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce and a little touch of Tabasco. What's kind of gross and interesting is human sweat actually contains between two to three grams of salt per liter, which is mad. Obviously now we'll get our cheese in, we'll do a parmesan. And in seawater there's about 35 grams of salt per liter, which is also crazy. It's very, very salty seawater, obviously. We're almost finished, we just need to cut our lettuce now, so we'll get the root thing off here. Salt is actually used to remove traces of water in aviation fluid once it's been purified. And according to recent scientific findings, salt was actually found in large deposits on Mars. So we have a run out on Earth. Now obviously we'll just get our lettuce into there. Just as we finish our salad here, obviously salt was used particularly by the Romans to pay their soldiers uh, part of their wages in salt as well. The history of human use of salt isn't perfect either. There's quite a dark side to it. It was actually used to purchase and trade slaves by the Romans as well as the Greeks. And that's where the phrase he's not worth his salt comes from. Right, so there's our traditional Caesar salad. Let's plate up some of it into our bowl here. So let's try this now. It should be really nice and salty. Mmm. We'll finish this segment on this last fact. Sea turtles actually cry to get rid of the extra salt in their body. So there you go. Right, so now we've done a bit of the history. Let's do a salty food taste test to see which is actually the saltiest food you can eat. Right, let's start off with the bacon here because that's pretty much well known to be very salty. Gonna give that like a three out of five. Let's move on to salted peanuts, see what they're like. Right, so another good contender, let's see. So there they are. 3.5 out of five. Let's go with our scotch eggs next. See how salty they are. That's not very salty at all. I'm gonna give that like a one out of five. Eggs good though. Right, let's do off with our Pringles next. These should be quite high. 3.9, almost four out of five. Right, pepperami up next. So I think the Pringles are in the lead at the minute. That's another three. That's not as salty as the Pringles. So last but not least, the anchovies. Let's see if these beat the Pringles. Ooh, five. Five out of five saltiness. You gotta be careful, that's a, that's a very high amount of salt in that for sure. Right, so that's my saltiness leaderboard. We've got anchovies in number one spot, we've got Pringles in second, we've got bacon third, we've got salted peanuts fourth, and finally comes the pepperoni, and Scott Chegg was disqualified, it wasn't very salty at all. Obviously I know there are a few foods that are a bit harder to get that are known to be a bit saltier than these, but maybe if we get our hands on them, we can try them as well. Right, so let's do some more tests on cheap versus expensive salt. So for our cheap option, it comes in at a pound for the box, and our expensive option was £2.30. So obviously they're both sea salt crystals, but by the sounds of them in the box, it's completely different shapes. So just before we do our test, you can see an absolutely massive difference in the volume between these two. They're the same weight, but they completely almost double the volume on our expensive option. So let's see which one saturates the water better in three, two, one. Let's give it a mix and see how well they dissolve. 
So we can see already that extra surface area on our expensive has done wonders. It's already almost all dissolved, whereas on our cheap, we've still got quite a bit left at the bottom. So expensive definitely takes the win on that one. Right, so obviously I could taste each one and tell you which one is saltier, but actually I can show you in this experiment. What we'll do is we'll have a look at the resistance of the salt water. The lower the resistance of the salt water, meaning the saltier the water is and the better conductive it is. So we'll do this quick test and see which one comes out on top. So starting with our cheap option, let's measure the resistance. So I don't know if you can see that, but we're kind of resting around 81.1. Let's look at our expensive one now. So we can see that the expensive sitting around the 60s, so it should be a fair bit saltier than our cheap. Let's do a quick taste test to confirm that. Right, so obviously for our taste test, we have to do fries. So let's salt our cheap ones first with the cheap salt here. Get some of that on. And now let's get our expensive salt over here. Right, so these have been mixed up. I don't know which is which. We'll try this side first. Let's see where it is. There we go. Definitely got bits of salt on there. Nice. Let's try this side. If I had to pick my preference based purely on what I've just tasted now, it's definitely this side here. So essentially these two salts are the same compounds, you know, sodium chloride, but why do they taste so drastically differently, this side being much saltier? And I honestly think that's because the way the crystals have formed uh, means that it sort of saturates the mouth a lot better. And again, that extra surface area is helping massively, I think. Right, so I definitely feel like overall there's a reason this salt is very popular, and that's just because it's quite good, even compared to something very similar. Now I do have to say, this does do the job and is perfectly effective at its price. Um, you know, and it will certainly season your food nicely, but if you can afford this, it's worth the extra price, I think. Right, so we've done some interesting tests, learned some interesting things, even pondered life's questions. Make sure you comment what you want to see me try next and also subscribe to never miss these. Again, we do these every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so check them out. And we obviously post content every day anyway in other places, so make sure you check those out, be in the description below. Very cool.